Welcome to the YouTube interviews. The effects of the COVID-19 virus are in the arts and beyond. We have a special guest today. He is the artistic director of the Beck Center of the Arts. This organization reaches out with creative therapies, dance, music, theater, visual arts, reaches to almost 60,000 people in the Northeast Ohio area. I welcome Scott, Mr. Scott Spencer. Hi, Scott. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm doing great today. So I want to, um, I want to talk to you, talk to us about how have you had adjusted since this COVID-19 came to be? You know, I feel like we're still in the infancy of it. We're really three weeks in. I think uh, we all kind of hit that wall. I know for us, it was uh, meetings that transpired on Thursday, March 12th. So it won't be long now until that's a month. So we're about three weeks into this. Um, at that time, that was the day we all gathered and watched the governor of Ohio pretty much, you know, shut down the state in terms of schooling and a lot of other things, you know, until, you know, about where we're at right now, of course, that's all been extended. So we uh, immediately scrambled and did a lot of things. Once, uh, you know, the uh, Beck Center has a huge educational component. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's actually two thirds of our business now. Uh, and it encompasses, again, all those areas you mentioned. And then we have a professional theater component as well, which constitutes about one third of our business. So we were midstream in every imaginable program. We had youth theater rehearsals going for James and the Giant Peach. We had professional theater rehearsals going for Steve Martin's Meteor Shower. We had all of our classes, all of our outreach, all of our creative arts therapies, you know, going out into the community. All of that was full bore. So we had to put pretty much the brakes on everything. Mm. And I think that's the story you'll hear from almost everybody else. I think yes. maybe a couple people were three or four days behind that curve, maybe thinking they were small enough that, you know, that was the time I think in Ohio when it was like no more than a hundred, which, mm. you know, we can always laugh at now. So, uh, so we put the brakes. So that evening I told the cast of Meteor Shower, uh, that we were not coming back to to finish the show, um, but we're having serious talks about regathering this time next year, and with the same cast, same design team. Nice. Uh, so we're working with that in mind, uh, and we'll have a season announcement here in the next, you know, um, four to six weeks. Uh, we can talk more about that. Yeah. Um, so that came to a stop, and uh, rehearsals for the youth theater show, which was to open uh, in May pretty much came to it certainly came to a stop uh since that time we've also postponed that show into next year and we just at the beginning of last week canceled our next studio theater production which is ayad akhtar's disgraced which would have been a regional premiere um i don't know what the future holds for that so two shows for the professional theater have been lost um and next up for us is a decision about our summer programming both in um, the professional theater, we're scheduled to do the musical Something Rotten. Uh, and can, I get can, it, can, I, can I talk about that one? Let's sure. Talk about that one now because um, I saw that that's I mean that's in July. So right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna um, maybe challenge you a little bit, Scott, on this a little bit here in the creativity part. Have when you think about that that particular show, okay, something um, um, something something rotten. Um, right. It's, it's pretty far in advance. Has there been discussion about doing it virtually? Here's the issue that professional theater faces, or theater anywhere. Um, unlike classes that you can hold online right now, you know, to double back, you know, we are holding classes online where we can. Music lessons, uh, individual music lessons work great online. Um, some art classes are working, but even the theater classes are much tougher because it's such, it's so dependent on, you know, small groups and, and interaction with each other. But, you know, we have to assume that this might go on longer than any of us hope. So we are rethinking our model in terms of education. Mm -hmm. However, in the world of theater, there are some prohibitive things that make it difficult just to say, hey, let's rethink this and deliver this platform online. First of all, um, the places that license properties mm. have very strict intellectual property rules uh, that includes almost always no videotaping. 
So it is strictly <laughs> prohibited. So in the world of dance, which you're from, obviously, it would depend on whether you know something is in the public domain. Now, I don't know, for instance, if Agnes DeMille's choreography has fallen into the world of public domain. Probably not yet, but you mm -hmm. might go back further you know, into, uh, you know, the 19th century stuff. 19th century, or early. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yes, you could. But the, but the theater is all, is all dominioned over. Mm -hmm. and then there's also the fact that we use union actors for some of our roles, and their union is very strict. Okay. So clearly, if this is something that's going to go on for a prolonged period of time, more than the two or three months, let's say end of the summer window, then I think both licensing services and actor unions or director unions or choreographer unions are all going to need to think about what they can do to lessen the restrictions in order for us to perhaps be able to gather a small amount of people in the same room, mm -hmm. do our work and put it on a video. But that said, you know, like everything else, unless you have a lot of high-end technology and some money to spend, you know, it looks like even though you and I are totally gorgeous today you know? <laughs> it's, um, well, well, Scott, thank you <laughs> it's um it's limiting we are we are i have this old fancy background that's basically you know uh, tantamount to a bad green screen <laughs> you know but it's something you know yes. so we don't have to look at my barren wall um but this is it and theater flattens out so we have some real hurdles mm -hmm. so it's not just as simple as yeah. hey let's you know let's do a show now I think a lot of my friends are already exploring, and we are too, ways to look into a public domain canon and maybe get some actors to Zoom and do some stuff. But that's great keeping our organizations out in front. Uh, I just started a video blog last week with my first guest, kind of like you're doing right mm -hmm. now, that's actually hitting the airwaves today with uh, one of our very famous alums. Um, but we're trying to keep out in front and say, hey, don't forget about us. We're still here. We're trying to give you some content and deliver mm -hmm. but it's not as simple as just taking this existing material uh and recording it because so many people would have great problems with that Got at least it. as we stand now so is the youth pro is the youth theater the same way it is um, it is. pretty much for the most part we pay license and royalty fees for all the properties that mm -hmm. we do so uh you know again you'd have to look back you know 80 80 plus years or more uh or you know obviously if you're creating your own content but you know nothing and nothing in the world is harder than writing plays and composing music for yeah. musicals it's uh it's no easy task so you know you have a you have such a huge reach though and you know they're going to be the Organize the community is looking to the Becca Center of the Arts for some guidance. I think so too, and that's why we're really trying to stay out in front. We're trying to, we do, uh, you know, many, many youth oriented classes on Saturday. I can tell you, we had seven one half hour tutorial classes mm -hmm. for this last Saturday. So, in some ways, we haven't missed a beat. Obviously, it's very different, but we're trying to honor those students and their families who have paid tuition and to say, hey, we're not giving up. We're not just going to sit idly by. Uh, we're going to try and create some content uh, and, and give you at least something, you know, that's similar or as similar as we can make it. But in that way, we understand that we're a community leader uh, and that we need to be out in front of this as best we can. But we're all learning how to do this every single day. It's a new challenge. Who who knew how to Zoom before two weeks ago? Correct, and you know, um, from a personal view, um, I had a tendency to give too much information to the kids. So it's it's so it's there's this half there's this yin yang going on about how much information you need to give to these kids now because they have school and they have other they have other pressures and they got to learn how to do it at home and and. Um, the fact that you're offering things and you give these options to go to your on Saturdays at whatever time it is. So, you know, be, you know, I make sure during the description, we write out the, the website and how people can get access to that. That way anybody right. in the world can do it if they wanted to. So right. really can and see we're that. offering, we're offering for the time being, we're not restrictive right now. We're not doing, um, you know, classes, yet where you have to have an enrollment number to get into the class we're putting it on our, our, our facebook presence our website uh and so anyone can tune in and kind of get a glimpse into the kind of programming that we're doing 
on our educational beat. Um, so in a way, not only are we serving the people who we've been serving, we're also letting audiences know, hey, we're out there. And uh, no matter how this takes us, in what direction, we want to still be a viable alternative for delivering the arts to the Northeast Ohio community. So speaking of community, okay, so the community is Northeast Ohio now. Now, because you're doing your, you're doing your um, outreach, these different avenues of reaching many, many people, this could actually grow your audience. Yeah, I mean, why not? Let's look at the silver lining here. <laughs> yeah. okay? that, would be, that would be great because, you know, we're always loath to go to the other side of town, sometimes the other side of the neighborhood, uh, and we don't know that's out there. I think every institution goes, I think we're the best kept secret in Cleveland. <laughs> you know, we all think that because there's so many people, I didn't know you did that. I, yeah. I mean, with Beck Center, it's often true. We have people who align clearly with the theater side, but also mm -hmm. others with the educational side, and they don't know, you know, what the other hand is doing. So this is a great way for us to to let you know new audiences know, hey, we're out there and we're gathering steam, and we're going to be back in whatever form we can be as soon as possible. And the other thing is what you're doing. The people who fund you, the funders, the patrons, they're seeing the effort, mm -hmm. and that can, that goes a long way for their support. And right. We've, you know, clearly, you know, we work on pre-sale of shows mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, there are audiences do know because we communicate with them constantly when we have to let a show go in the case of, you know, two professional theater shows now and one new theater show. So we need to let them know this is not going on. We have to give them alternatives. And one of those alternatives, of course, is a refund if that's what they need. Uh, but others are to fold things into next season. But it's amazing the amount of people who are not requesting refunds. I think I've heard from both our internal sources, but other theaters as well, that they're looking at an 80% mark of mm -hmm. people who are just donating the money, just going, you know what, we know it's hard for you. Arts organizations are suffering terribly, and we're going to have some of the hardest time coming back. So we're going to take that $30 ticket and just donate it in. And you know what, when you get up and running, we'll buy more tickets for other things later, which is such a remarkable response to all of this. We're so grateful. And that seems to be happening a lot across the board. We're, our, our sister organizations are not reporting back that they are having to dig deep in their pockets for refunds at the moment. So just for any of you out there who are you know, part of that movement, we thank you. And I want to thank them also. So I'm going to finish up here, uh, Scott. You had a lot of good things to say. And I think part of what I'm hearing is, one, that um, the, pe the support of arts organizations is strong. The, the people who are part of these organizations from kids and families, they're not asking for refunds for their tuition. That's such a community feel. Yeah. And the opportunity to reach out beyond there's, there's all these opportunities and in, in the silver lining of it all. We have to think of the positive in the, in the middle of things that maybe, maybe doesn't feel that way. So Scott's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's very, you know, luckily you and I are in a very life affirming, um, you know, career track, you know, whether it's avocational or it's what we do for a living, you know, when it comes back to it, I mean, you know, we're, we're not raising our hands and saying, hey, look at us, we're just as important as the healthcare workers. I mean, right now, those are our saints. And yes. We better not forget all that they're doing for us. But you know, the arts are very important. And I've seen lots of memes going out that say, hey, as you're hunkered down at home right now, figuring out what it is you can do to pass the hours in the day, think about how many hours of those days are being passed based on an author who wrote you a book or a musician who wrote you a song. You know, the, the, the creative artists out there in their own way are sustaining what we're going through right now. Um, so I'm hoping that people re will remember that as well when time comes for us to, to when we get that permission to regather. And we will eventually. Eventually. With that, let's finish off. Scott Spencer, who is the Artistic Director of Beck Center of the it's Arts. Spence, actually, but that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. It's Scott Spence. Sorry. Spencer is the more common name. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, the artistic director of the Beck Center of the Arts, it, it was a pleasure talking to you and seeing you again after 
It's been about almost uh, 15 years. Or, I Scott. think it has been. Yeah. Um, we're going to put the uh, website on the description, but you can go to beckcenter.org. And yeah, yeah www.beckcenter.org and on Facebook, we're at Beck Center for the Arts. Uh, and you can uh, glimpse all our great programming there. Uh, we hope you do come out and visit us at CyberWine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you very much, Scott. I do appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Brian. Okay, bye-bye.